All right. You ready? Sure. Welcome to Fringe Element here on the 440 Sports Network. My name is Brayden Gall, and you can follow me on Twitter at Brayden Gall. Mine's Aaron Dugan. You can follow me on Twitter at the Aaron Dugan or Instagram, Aaron underscore Dugan. Uh, a bit of a state of the union for the LSU Tigers a little bit later on on the show today with Scott Rabelais of the Baton Rouge Advocates. Been covering them forever. Uh, we did this, of course, um, with uh, Matt Baker of the, Ten- the Tampa Bay Times a couple of weeks ago. It, with the Florida Gators, we thought we'd take a look at a lot of schools in the SEC from sort of a state of the union standpoint. I thought we'd start with the two teams that have new coaches, at least for now. Uh, and of course, you can go back and listen to that episode. Uh, the Florida Gators go check that out a couple of weeks ago today, Scott Rabelais. So we're going to dive deep into the LSU Tigers, find out what's going on. Uh, even with coach. O, I even got a coach O question in there. So make sure you go check that out. Uh, that'll be a little bit later on in the show. We've got some, Party, watch party, Super Bowl watch party, etiquette, do's and don'ts um, that that I'd like you to maybe impart some wisdom on the folks out there because I had a few random experiences and we'll have a few experiences this weekend to discuss. So we'll get into some of that. Uh, I'm going to be actually at an outdoor hockey game this weekend. So interesting. That's pretty interesting. So we might we might have some fun with that a little bit later on as well. Uh, State of the Union on Braden and I. Braden's about to throw up. And I've had a migraine for 48 hours. So <laughs> do you know what's more important than physical, your own physical health? College football, apparently. So that's where we are. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you pulled back the curtain for everyone. I'm glad. I just think it's important for people to know because I don't know how this is going to go. I think it's going to be fine because I guess we're used to just uh, killing our own bodies in the line in our line of work. <laughs> but um, just so everyone is, is updated and up to speed here. We we are both questionable for the end of the podcast. We're there's not no, well. There's no question about that. Make sure you check out the <laughs> YouTube page, of course, as well. Aaron, you guys do great work to put the, the show up there every single week. So make sure you check that out. Uh, of course, rate, review, subscribe, all that great stuff at 440 Sports. We obviously are going to start with the playoff expansion not taking place and the giant, can I say dick tease on the show? I mean, I just did. The sure. giant, the giant tease. I don't even know if that's appropriate or not. Not that I care, but like <laughs> I've never heard anyone say that like that. Well, like, like hesitantly. I, mean, I no, I, I mean I understand what it means, but like, yeah. Well, I guess if people say that, that say dick tease are like ready to say it, so yeah, yeah guess I guess the hesitant. <laughs> I, I wasn't fully committed uh, and I blame, for the week. It, I wasn't fully committed to launching into a dick tease rant. <laughs> I can't because, imagine why. Because of my tummy. It was my tum tum. That was my tum tum was the problem. See, <laughs> I hate so, this already. <laughs> so we'll talk about uh, obviously what the committee and all the commissioners have done to us by teasing us with expansion only to rip the rug <laughs> out from underneath our feet. I'm um, not going to say what I was about to say. Keep going. Good news. And this is what we're going to talk about in a minute. The good news is that it's probably pretty good for the SEC either way you slice it. So we'll get to that uh, in just a little bit here. That'll be our first topic today on the show. However, Aaron Dugan, Fringe Element, is an SEC football podcast brought to you by Jaspers, um, a a escape to find health and wellness that neither Braden nor I have have. I can't even. Speak Speak today. It, it's going to be a long episode. Folks. Holy shit! Jasper's is a restaurant with good food, and you can go there to feel good. And we should try that because I've tried everything else. I, I have nothing else to add. Go to Jasper's. The parking is free. The food's great. Uh, okay, so I, I just this was like Friday evening, Friday afternoon, typical time to to dump news that's sort of bad. And you know, I, I I'm a little surprised that all of the, the the people wearing bow ties and suspenders that you know golf mm-hmm. together and decide all these d- important things with all their fancy money and wallets and private jets and all their stuff they just decided to not have expansion of the playoff until at least four more years when the contract runs out first of all i know you're big into the pr and messaging as well as i am and i cannot think of a more poorly messaged like issue in our sport in college football than what these people have done the last year. They they did this to us last June by telling us 
Oh, we're going to have expansion. The playoffs are going to expand. We've got a working committee. Here's a really cool thing, a form a format of 12 teams with lots of detail. It's not official yet, but we're going to work it all out. And because they're all so self-absorbed, they have now come back eight months later and said, no, just kidding. It's not going to happen, even though the entire court of public opinion is behind expansion. We'll get to what it means for the SEC. But just, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that these, these powerful, important, self-absorbed people just decided that they couldn't get along and do anything for the health of the sport. I, I just, I guess I shouldn't be surprised, Aaron, but I am. And I guess that's my fault. Well, yeah, that's kind of how, did you see Feinbaum's rant on this? I mean, he was fired up. Yes. As he should be ending with, um, and I quote, he said, I should not be surprised when it comes to the quote ineptitude of the leadership of this sport. There is none. I was like, damn. Yeah. Um, Yes, it is. It's, you know, we both had reservations about it uh, from the jump. Uh, I will say, although I'm annoyed that they had these conversations and put it all out there. Um, I guess I still had some questions, but I thought maybe those were being answered behind the scenes. And I think they probably were when it comes to player health and all of that. I hadn't heard a lot of detail on that. That was my one hesitation still is, you know, is there a benefit to this? Are we really finding, um, I think it adds a lot to the sport. I think it adds a lot of excitement to the sport, um, kind of helps, uh, take us out of the, uh, stagnation that we're at in terms of, you know, people feeling like they have any chance for postseason play at all. Um, I had unanswered questions. I had a feeling those are being worked out. But when you have a situation where every single person has 100% leverage, which is the need for a unanimous vote, it's really, really hard to get to. What I don't understand is why we were teased with it. And was that just them trying to put pressure on everybody to say yes by putting it out there, being like, hey, this is going to happen, and then just thought that that would put enough pressure on everybody to unanimously vote it in? Like, is that the point? I, it's 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 so funny that you say that because I've thought about that a lot since Friday. Like, what what purpose did it serve? Because all you've done is make yourself look really dumb and right. really and really to to find bombs credit point like completely inept that you can't get along that you can't solve problems that you can't just simply compromise and agree to try to do something better for the sport. And there's different leagues that want different things. Certain, certain leagues, the big 10 is concerned about automatic bids. You know, AC, the ACC is trying to leverage this whole thing to get, you know, um, uh, Notre Dame to join the conference. Like there's just, you know, there's all these different motives and they're all just thinking about themselves. And to your question, I, I think about why, 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 why is this happened? Why are they doing this? Why did they do it last June or whatever to put this out? And it almost comes back to, the same reason I thought they floated it in the beginning. And which is because they've been working on this for like two and a half years. Like it's mm -hmm. not like they just started last April or May and then just settled on a 12 team format with all this, you know, detail. Right. It's they were having a God awful PR month. It was name, image and likeness. It was Supreme court rulings. It was, you know, conference realignment. Like it was all this stuff that nobody, like, it was sort of creating all these bad vibes for college football. And I thought, what better way to control the narrative, recapture the direction of the conversation, than to tell everyone with the most beautiful of all of catnip for college football media, <laughs> playoff expansion. Oh, we're going to expand. We're going to expand. Don't, don't look at this terrible Supreme yeah, Court like, ruling. Don't look over, over here. here. Right. Don't look at this terrible Supreme Court ruling over here. Just... But we have no clue what's happening with name, image, and likeness. We have no idea what to do with it. We're about to make it all legal, but don't worry about that. Check out this expansion idea over here. And I, other than that, I can't, I honestly, I can't come up with why they would have gone so public with such a detailed plan if there was a chance that eight months later it would look like such a disaster. I would also like to know who had a say and if that was made public early, because it sounds yeah. like there was some a little bit of disagreement behind the scenes, uh, especially with transparency from, was it ACC that started speaking up about who voted what way? Yeah. The, now it's like, now and it's now, like a reality. Now it's like a reality TV yeah, show. Yeah. Because like, it's like, what happened to, you know, we're putting it all out there. I, I don't know. I don't know if anybody had a say in if, you know, feeling it was a, at the very, very top of the committee or, 
whoever that uh, got to say that, you know, put it out the news when we first heard about the expansion. And I'm sure that was a strategic, it probably was a strategic distraction, like you're saying, or just an attempt at manifesting something they wanted to happen and putting pressure. But when you need a unanimous vote, it doesn't really matter how much pressure you put on. One person's opinion is, uh, can change everything. And I don't know. You know how much my wife and I love the bad, bad, bad reality TV. Yes. Like this strikes me as one of those like, like oh, you know. I, well, there's I, an alliance, so it's basically Survivor. <laughs> right. Ginger is the one who told me that Alex voted the two of you into the truth booth, but I, that's not what I'm hearing from Tabitha, and I'm just not sure if I believe. And oh, by the way, don't tell anybody, but I voted them into the truth booth too. Like it's just like what shows it, it feels, the truth booth. I don't even know. It's okay. I think is this are you the one maybe i don't know it's the one that makes us feel smarter than the the contestants okay whatever it, it just it does feel very like what why can't you you're all these rich powerful people that are in charge of this sport why can you not just get your shit together just just get your shit together and figure it out because here's the deal to, to bring it to the sec the sec wins no matter what here folks like th- this is the one thing if you're a fan of this show and you're listening and you're a fan of a team in the league, like if you're Kentucky or Ole Miss and you just had great seasons, 10 win seasons, certainly those two, two fan bases or whoever that's going to be next year wants a chance to get into the playoff. Right. It's obvious. We all want that. We want that for as many teams in college football to make those games more meaningful for as long as possible. But the SEC just played its third all SEC championship game in 10 years. Like it's, it's won the last three national championships with three different teams. <laughs> like yeah, it, they don't eat they, the SEC is. And Greg Sankey has said this all along from the beginning. We don't need expansion. We don't care. We're fine right now as it is because we're getting not one, but two teams into the playoff a lot. And y'all aren't even getting one in. So we're fine right now. Y'all are the ones that need to, to, to make the adjustment to help your, your conferences. You can tell he's annoyed too, because he said, I can't remember his exact quote, but he said something after all this is over. He said, um, I mean, this has been, I mean, we did this for three years and got nowhere. And basically like, I didn't care to begin with. We were fine either way. (laughs) Now I spent three years of my time basically for nothing. And I don't remember what, how the question got him there, but it was kind of like, it felt like, well, I don't really feel like arguing about this anymore or doing this again, because I just did it for three years and got nothing out of it. So I'm not sure if that was his sentiment, but it felt like it. Yeah, it's been eight months of the exact same statement from Greg Sankey. We believe in the overall health of the game and expansion is a path for us to get there. But either way, we in the SEC are totally fine either way. That's it. Like that's he's been saying basically those same words for the last eight eight or nine months. And it's true. If they expand to 12 then the SEC benefits because maybe they can get three or four teams in. Right now, the SEC is dominating the sport, so it doesn't matter to them. I I mean, clearly what he doesn't want is a six or an eight-team playoff with automatic bids because that limits his chances at getting more teams in. But, I I mean, I guess, I I mean, if if that's on the SEC, then fine. I guess they wear that around their neck. But like like you said, it needs to be unanimous. And I think they need to put some women in the room so they can get shit done. (laughs) That's what I think. Men. <laughs> how many women There's, are in con- how many women are in the Senate right now? <laughs> we need we we're need just some more. missing some things. God, just look around and be like, what this isn't working. So what should be different? And there's one very, very um clear, yeah. clearly missing group. And it might help, guys. Just think about it. Are you suggesting that women are better at compromise and working shit out than men? I'm suggesting that women are better at those things. Um, we're better at being sick than y'all. We do that. We do things when we feel bad, even though we feel bad, but you guys don't, there's a few things. Don't lump me in with that group. I don't ever take days off ever. Yeah. You, well, I did, I did the show while having COVID and nobody knew. So that's true. (laughs) And when you're chasing children around, you don't really have a choice, but yeah, I mean, it's just, just think about it. I, I actually, I hadn't, I had not thought about it because, um, of course, (laughs) <laughs> oh, man, but, but, but I, you're hundred percent right. If we had like three or four conference commissioners that were female, I guarantee you it would. You just got to berate them. Like you got to sit them down and be like, all right, ladies, listen up, just make them <laughs> put them in their place a little bit, <laughs> make them feel stupid for not getting along. Be like, you know, we're not getting beers until we fig- we sort this out. 
So what are we going to do? <laughs> well, it's bad for the game, folks. It really is. Um, I was excited about it. I think most fans of every conference were ready for this to happen. Well, now you got the guys oh. in the you got now you got the players excited about it, which that was what pisses yeah. me off because now you've got guys going in thinking that you know they have these hopes of being in the college pl- or the college football playoffs and their families thinking about it. I'm like, yep. what are we going to do in the postseason? And now you just yep. killed student athletes' dreams, and now you got me pissed off. So, so lots of bad news there, obviously, um, and bad PR and just bad decision making and ineptitude. Again, I'll just keep quoting Feinbaum here, but yeah. What's interesting is that there, like we've already pointed out some good news for the SEC in that they don't really care. They're fine right where it is. And, you know, if you're a Bama fan or a Georgia fan or an AM fan, LSU in the national championship run in 2019, if Florida ever gets their shit together, if Tennessee or Auburn ever gets their shit together, like the, these, these programs can get into the 14 playoff just fine, uh, even without winning the conference, as we've seen. Um, expansion would be, would be great too, but you know, <laughs> the other good, I guess, I don't know if this is good or not, but I just, my guess, I suppose like tomorrow it could come out that they've found an agreement. Like, I suppose it, like there's no, they've said, they've come out and said, oh, it's, we're going to stick with what we've got for four more years. If they were anywhere close, they wouldn't have done this because it's so bad for yeah. PR. Like you just said, if they were anywhere near, they would have just kept their mouth shut for a little bit longer. I think they're at a total stalemate. I, I I agree with you. I'm just saying, like, should one of them speak to their wife and and understand <laughs> like that we need to compromise? If if anybody happens to, I, I guess I'm just trying to find the silver lining here and just yeah. say, if take they can a note just, like, from Matt Luke and listen to your wife. <laughs> there you go. Look at you. Yeah, no, you. I mean, I, I love that reference. I know. I, I just think like if out of nowhere on a Friday afternoon they can announce that there's no expansion, can't they just like? Anytime they want to announce that we've figured out expansion. I mean, I, and then we'll just be like, you guys hope. really are a joke. Yeah, you are correct on that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's, yes, that's my only hope. <laughs> that's my like hope of this, right. Is just, well, <clears throat> maybe we just announced something like in August again, that there's going to be expansion. And this time it's going to happen two years from now. And maybe we get excited again. I, I don't know. It's my only hope. I do hope that hope as we, this happens, I know that things have to change and I'm not saying, I don't think bowls should dictate everything. I know that how much money bowls make. And I know that it's, that doesn't always um, benefit the student athlete as much as I think it proportionately should, but I do hope that they can maintain some of the traditions. Like I know the Rose bowls kicking and screaming. Sorry, I have to cough. <coughs> Are you okay? Not really. Yeah. And um, we're all very verklempt about this playoff expansion thing. Big, big <laughs> I'm allergic. I'm allergic to ineptitude. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, you know, but I, and I understand. So they said they're pissed because, you know, they don't want to have to compete with the college football playoff quarterfinals. Like we just want three hours once every three years to not compete. So I, I do think that if they, as since they're taking their sweet ass time, if they can do this and preserve traditions and actually give people space that, you know, for like for college traditions, like the Rose bowl to have their moment. And I'm not saying that because I think that these bowls need to make a bunch more money. I think that, uh, student athletes in any way, shape or form that are making it to postseason play because of whatever they've been able to do throughout the season, deserve their have to have their shining moment. Yeah. So since you guys are taking so long anyway, why don't you just sort out all the details and make sure you get it all right? Yeah. I mean, if it, like, like we're trying to find silver linings here, maybe they get it a better, maybe they do a better job because they're going to wait an extra year or two. Again, like we can try to come up with ways to, <laughs> maybe. Spin it here. but because here's the, the other thing about all this is, when have you ever seen a major, large financial entity turn down massive sums of money? Because that's what they're doing. By not expanding and not being able to come to an agreement, they are turning down enormous sums of money. And that is really the, like as shocking as anything. It's because there are parties involved that are, it's all money. It's there's parties involved that are whole, like stomping their feet and standing in their place because they know that there's potential money on the horizon. And that's, I mean, one of them is the ACC wants Notre Dame real bad. So that's a, I mean, that's a money thing. Is it not? Oh yeah. And it ain't going to, and it ain't going to (laughs) happen. No, it's not. They've made it this far guys. Just give it up. But yeah, it's, it's all, it's all money related, but it is, it is a large sum of money. 
I mean, for in for everyone involved, part of me feels like, and then people are saying, you know, oh, it's just NIL and like we have to figure all this shit out, which I mean, honestly, really, those aren't related. Um, but nope. there is a there, I really think they just had too much going on and their like brains were just like melting. They and Aaron, they just Aaron, they couldn't they could not handle a simple investigation of one school. Like the NCAA, like like I, I agree with you. They're not related except for one thing, the complete dysfunction with which they are being managed. Mm-hmm. Like the NCAA and all of the people in charge have completely mismanaged almost all of this. Like they mismanaged right. Reggie Bush in USC, Miami and Nevin Shapiro. They mismanaged Hugh Freeze and Ole Miss. Like they're mis- they mismanage everything. <laughs> they, they, they can't get women basketball players an appropriate weight room. <laughs> <laughs> like without being called to the mat, like it's just epic, so epic stupid. fails. I know. So and stupid. the thing is, NIL is not what's holding this up. I do understand from a like from a running an athletic department or client standpoint, this is a lot of things happening all at once. I feel bad for people trying That's to sort true. this all out at each individual school. The thing is, guys, especially the NCAA. We shouldn't be having to handle all of this at once because NIL should have been way before now. So yep. kind of put ourselves in this position. <sighs> Anyways, right. anything, anything else? Oh, yeah, I was going to say, are we done ranting about how I'm done. this all is? Because we, we've got a, a lighter topic that we're going to have some fun with. And I just want to make sure we get all the stupid Wait, stuff. before we move on. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the main thing, I know that, that Notre Dame's holding up the ACC, but didn't Philip say it's straight up just Clemson? <laughs> Oh, oh, you mean that like... He said Clemson just doesn't want to play more games, period. Yeah. Well, they're the... the, like, And this is what's so cute about all of this. Like right now, Clemson's the dominant team that wants to have its cake and eat it too in the ACC. And like right now, Bama and Georgia are the two that everyone... Like that dominate the SEC. But like we've seen it change quickly. Joe Burrow, Urban Meyer, Cam Newton. Like we've seen it change quickly. Mm -hmm. And... All it takes is Dabo Sweeney to be like, yeah, I'm going to go to the Philippines and, you know, minister to young people. And like all of a sudden, like, boom, Clemson sucks again. And and so, like, it's just it's so short what you wish for. It's so short sighted to just look at like the current. Uh, it's so frustrating. I, I, I agree. It, like the Big Ten wants automatic bids. Fine. SEC, give it to them. Give them an automatic bid. Like. The, the, these teams are these conferences are, are talking about doing away with divisions and i'm like okay great you're doing something smart look at you guys you you even take a step towards something intelligent and we and we applaud you for it and then you still fall on your face and i really truly believe that like i said if it really was about the health and safety of the student athlete i i again have unanswered questions but i thought they were probably being answered behind the scenes but jim phillips came out and said you know there's too many un- unrelated or unanswered questions about health and wellness of the student athlete along with just this overall disruption of college athletics with nil and then all this stuff but the thing is didn't you guys all have this conversation about it being 12 12 teams and you know how many games that involves. So I feel like the health and safety of the student athlete conversation should have come earlier. So if I really thought that that's what it was, and maybe they are really running into unanswered questions with that. I'm just having a hard time believing that oh, that's I don't, really I don't, what's holding it up right now, yeah. because it seems like you guys already decided. No, I, I think I, I, I <laughs> come on. We know better. That's not what's holding it up. <laughs> I know. Like, and I so want to believe, I want to believe, believe that too. I, I want to believe that, but like, you know what it really is? It's, Dollar. It, it's, they can't even decide on the 12. They can't even decide on the 12. They can't decide. They want all the bowl games to be in because they're their, their rich golfing buddies. Mm-hmm. And they want like, it's just, it's so convoluted. The entire thing. They're, they're tripping over their dick tees is what it is. That's what it is. Can you trip Jesus. over a dick tees? That's what they're doing. I, I was, com- it looks I was like committed. it would seem as if you can. I was more committed to that one. Was it better? You were. It became, <laughs> flowed much better this time. <laughs> all right. Love okay. Good... Please move on. <laughs> um, choice all of right. words by me. All right. Uh, sp- speaking of tripping over yourself, um, uh, real quickly here, I, I was, I have a lot of discussions with my wife about sort of social etiquette and norms at gatherings. Uh, I will be at a watch party this weekend for Nashville SC here in Nashville, which is really cool. Uh, and then we got a state, we got a hockey game. I got a buddy's 40th birthday party that already wow. the, the, the text thread already is going, is, is insane. It's already like, is it's, it it's couples? Not even, it's, it's not even safe for this pod. And we say whatever the hell oh, we damn. want. Um, 
And I just, I got to thinking like, cause her and I discuss like party norms all the time, like Super Bowl party. What's a proper etiquette. If you're watching a big game, like you've watched a lot of games with like Arkansas fans and Ole Miss fans lately. And mm -hmm. like, what, what, what are the things, and this is what I wanted to do is just allow you to speak to the men because clearly that's what the theme of this episode is. Wait, you guys need a lot of help. <laughs> like, what is it if you, you, if you're at with a guy at a party and it's a big group, and it's a social setting, there's food and there's drinks and there's like multiple rooms and like, like what, if you've what attended are, a party with someone like, yeah, like a, you're with like, what okay. are the things that automatically and maybe not, maybe you just met this person there and you just hit it off or whatever. Okay. I'm just, I'm just curious. Like what are the absolute deal breakers? No, no's at a part. And I'm not talking about like streaking, like that stuff's obvious, right? right. Like, I'm not, I'm not talking about the obvious stuff. What, like what, what are the absolute deal breakers when it comes to etiquette? Because my wife and I argue about this all the time. Okay. So I need you to hone in a little bit more. Is it like dating etiquette? Like, are you saying like, if you go with someone be behavioral etiquette at like, let's say hypothetically you went with somebody to a Super Bowl party. Okay. Like date to a Super Bowl party. -ish. And this person got bombed. Yeah. Like just shit house, right? Mm -hmm. Just tanked and, and falling down, knocking stuff off tables. Like I'm assuming that is a deal breaker at yeah. some point, like at some point. Especially if you do it a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't. Yeah. I mean, like, what if you sit down in a room full of a bunch of people <laughs> and this guy sits down in a room, no one's eating. And this guy sits down with a heaping pile of every appetizer that's being served. Has it been it like, sound, Ooh, are you going to look over at him and just be like, I can't believe I'm, I came to the party with that guy. <laughs> oh yeah. I would, no I would, I would verbally distance myself immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, that's the kind of stuff like subtle behavioral. So the issues. food's out and no one's touched it yet. Cause it's like, just, it's just hit the table and he doesn't know anyone maybe, or maybe he does. And he's loaded his plate full when like apps are still being set out. Maybe he's eating his nerves. Cause he's, he's trying to impress you. He doesn't you know? sound nervous because he sounds <laughs> hammered. Well, again, food and drinks could be separate from bad behavior i'm just i just was curious because um okay okay this is good let me think about this like a taking bit. control taking control of the radio or the i guess the playlist <laughs> i don't know the the cell phone i don't know i'm imagining this person like not knowing the group that well okay so if you do know the group well obviously you can get away with a lot more like if you're married more. If you're married you can get with you can, you can drink the extra cocktail and be a little bit more belligerent than if you're trying to impress obviously yeah except for then i mean you then have to face the repercussions because you probably live with that person so oh, yeah 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 but yeah you it's can get away with more if you know the group if you don't if it's like a gathering where it's several different groups like the arkansas Ole miss thing that we had my friend hosted she's an arkansas fan it's like friends of friends bringing friends and it was just you know not right. you might you might meet some people you don't know right right so when you're in that setting and you don't it's not like all your high school buddies getting back together. Cause then it's like, everyone's going to be idiots and you know, you kind of expect that and you're still going to call people out. But if you don't know, if you don't know at least 20% of the people <laughs> at an event, you should probably watch your behavior. I would say eating way before everyone and loading up your plate is maybe not a like absolute deal breaker, but people are definitely judging you. <laughs> and then I'd say the taking control of the radio or the music when it's not your house. If you don't know the homeowner, homeowner, well, you can't do that. What else? So, uh, how about asking the homeowner if like a certain bottle of liquor is available? Don't do that. Like, Hey, is that, uh, is that McAllen 12 available? If there? it's available, it's on the counter sitting by the cups. <laughs> it's not, it's not right. rocket science guys. It's Can really not. Think can you think of any moments where you were just like, I can't believe this happened. And like, that oh, was God. it for you with somebody. Oh, I mean, I wish I could think of them on the spot. Yes. I know. I've change, had change the names to protect the uh, guilty here <laughs> to protect the guilty. I just throw it all out there. Um, Ooh, do you have one? So I can give myself a second to think of my best one. Uh, I, so I can, it wasn't like at a watch party and this was way before I met my wife, but like, no, I, not, 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 nothing that was sort of like not tied to a, of something very emotional, right? Like I definitely didn't behave properly, like near the end of a relationship when we were sort of going through a breakup, but we were all going out with friends and I had to put on like a good face for like her friends that were in town. And then we all went out, but like, I probably drank too much. 
and then like probably was too much of a smart ass the whole night and then probably needed to walk home early. <laughs> Maybe allegedly, but like allegedly. But that's that's more of like we're all going out and drinking heavily. Like we're all yeah. going to go party. People are going to act kind of crazy. This is more like, all right, you're an adult. You're not 24. You're at you're an adult. You're at a, a, a large gathering. You're watching the Super Bowl or the national championship or a big sporting event. And you're sort of at someone's house. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just. Yes. I, I definitely wanted, had I the liquor a lighter thing topic happen. today. <laughs> I've definitely had the liquor thing happen with like taking someone to a friend's house to my best friends married to each other, Mary Carlisle and Ricky, who they're both like, don't give a shit. So they'll tell people what's up. So I had someone took someone there one time and I think maybe did, I had like been on a couple of dates with them before that. And then I'm like, just throw them to the wolves. Cause you bring them around my friends and it's like, you, you'll well, figure I- out real quick if they can keep up or not. I think the I'm, question came I'm up like a, the nice I'm pod, whiskey. I'm, I'm just a podcast friend of yours and I'm terrified of all your friends. <laughs> they can be scary. They're funny as shit, but very intense. They'll call you out. Yeah. I think the liquor question came up. Like, can we open? I'm like, can we open this? Should we, can, do you think we can drink this? I'm like, no, I, we definitely can't drink that. And <laughs> no one here even knows you. I definitely don't like you enough to ask if you can drink that. And I would love to see you ask them if you can drink that. So <laughs> don't Maybe. do, that's an absolute, no, I think if think of the liquor, this is a good lesson, Braden. You can't drink it unless the host gets it out and wants to drink it with you, or it's already sitting with the drinks, right? Yeah, like, yeah, like I totally agree. Um, I, I can't I think totally of agree. any other really good ones except drinking insane amounts at a party and being belligerent, and then also everyone finding out that you drove there. And then you're going to like get in your car and drive home because now you've just stressed everybody out and you've been annoying the whole time. And now you're going to leave and drive. Yeah. You shouldn't do that either. But I guess that's kind of a given, like don't drive drunk vibes. Okay. Well, I just, I just wanted to see, um, you know, I wish I had known so I could really think through that. The life and times of Aaron Dugan. I just thought maybe you'd have some, uh, some lighthearted stories for the folks. Out there. <sighs> yeah. Hey, can we, uh, can, we break open that, can we break open that Blanton's? No douchebag. You can't Absolutely. drink my Blanton's. You didn't even bring an app or offer to bring anything to the party. <laughs> right, you can't right. now drink the nicest liquor. Right, exactly. Um, I'll I'll be at a hockey game at a football stadium, and I wanted to run something past you. You can watch okay. any sporting event, like any sporting event in the whole world, in an SEC stadium. Now, I did not tell you this question; it just just popped into my head. No, he did not. You can watch you can watch any sporting event in the whole world in an SEC football stadium. Oh. Do you have? I think I would want to see, and I'll let you think about it here. Okay. I think I would want to see because I'll be watching a hockey game at a football stadium on Saturday night. And it's going to be cold in Nashville. So it's going to be cool. Uh, but the stadium is sort of not very charming. It's the Titan stadium. It's just not a beautiful building. And, but I, I think about college football stadiums and I'm like, Oh, like these places are just meccas. And I think I would want to see like the big, and I don't know enough about EPL soccer to know which is the biggest rivalry, but if it's like Chelsea versus Liverpool or yeah, Man City versus Man United, or what? Give, give me the mm-hmm. biggest, most hated Auburn Alabama EPL rivalry, and put that in like, I, I like Tiger Stadium, Neyland Stadium, probably one of those two, and and just filled it with a bunch of drunk blokes from England, <laughs> and 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 like have them go to town in Baton Rouge. That would be nuts. It would have to be soccer for me. Like, I wish I had something better and more that wasn't the same answer as you, but you can't, I can't think of anything wilder than that. Like, like basket, like if you put an NBA game in a football stadium, I don't know. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to see it. I mean, you're not gonna be able to see the hockey game. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it'll be, That's true. I'm trying to think of what the best stadium would be. These are you be have like, good off like the bubble, cuff questions today that I'm not ready for. It'll be like bubble hockey. Like the little guys like skating yeah. around down there. Uh, how about asked. the other? What Go if ahead. we did the other way, and we did? You could take an SEC game, two football Ooh. teams in the SEC, and put it somewhere else. Like Dude, that'll be easier. Put it on the set of Yellowstone. <laughs> I still haven't seen that. <laughs> like in the valley, in between the mountains, and just have like Georgia and Auburn play in the mountains of Yellowstone on the set. Like that'd be pretty cool because we had Tennessee and Virginia Tech play at Bristol Motor Speedway which is a really cool venue. I'm just, Mm -hmm. I'm just, now I'm just throwing stuff out there. I feel, what if you could take, Ooh, I'm trying to think of the two teams that I would want to put in the actual 
set scenario of Ted Lasso. And I want him to coach the game. <laughs> that's what I want. I want that's if that were real. Well, it's, it's clearly Auburn. It's it, it has to, Auburn has to be on one side. Yeah. So, uh, Auburn versus AFC Richmond. <laughs> oh, so good. Uh, is there, is there like a, cause this is the other thing that hockey's done is they've done a really good job of like putting it in like visually stunning places. Mm-hmm. Like they, they did a game at like Lake Tahoe. Like, I, I don't know if there's, and I don't know if a big city would work because college football fans aren't really big Northern city people. But like, if you could put it on, like if you could put a giant sec game in central park, like yeah, how cool, sick, how cool would that be? So now yeah. we're building a re- now we're building stadiums. Oh, yeah, that's, what they're doing. that's what, that's what they're doing. They're building, you know, they, they yeah, put right. it inside of a racetrack. Yeah, I know. And they race cars through the streets of Nashville. It's true. What was, what kind of car was that? Um, that's a, 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 Indy? a, a Indy cars. Yeah. And they do that. Like they do that in St. Pete. They do that road courses all over the place. So I, I like, I'm just think, yeah, trying to think tough. like, it would also be fun to do like the same, like switch and go into one of those, like, you know, Manchester, like soccer stadiums and take everyone over there and watch everyone, all the British people and European people just judge the shit out of all the sec fans <laughs> and how big of slobs and Hicks we are. And like, just like see Florida, how Florida, Tennessee at Wembley stadium. Can you imagine? <laughs> They'd be like, please exit the building. Uh, I think you are. Oh, I, I'm not. I'm giving them. Are. I'm acting like I they're more refined giving, than they are. I think you're giving way too much credit to the to the uh, English soccer fans. I think I am too, but it's not soccer. So they're less interested. But we wouldn't get as much of a pass because they don't care. They they drink just as much as we do down here in the south. They we, do. We, we, they are Looney Tunes like we are. They'd be re- yeah. They would be ready to party. I guess either way. Yes. Yeah, they yeah, just might like, not be like, they might not kill each other over it, but they would be ready yeah. to drink with us. No, I agree. All right. Just some things to think about, Aaron. Damn, just, uh, I know I wasn't ready for that. Just if I think of something good, I'll tweet it at you. Um, Liam Cohen, real quickly, a piece of news. Liam Cohen leaving the Kentucky Wildcats to probably go be the offensive coordinator for the Super Bowl champion, Los Angeles Rams. I think he feels um, like he maybe missed out a little bit. <laughs> Did a did a wonderful job with Will Levis uh, yeah. in that offense last year for Kentucky in his one season, stabilizing the Kentucky offense probably better than anyone has under Mark Stoops in a while. And now he's going back, and he didn't get a ring. He didn't get a ring, but he did Kentucky a really good job went, at Kentucky. Kentucky went from the 107th ranked scoring office in 20 scoring offense in 2020 to the 35 35th spot. In 2021, so in one year, went from 21.8 points a game to 32, and then they also jumped from 115th in total offense to 50th Look in one you. year. I know, Look good stats. So that's pretty crazy. In one in one year, went from 107th to 35th. And in Will Levis's first year on the team, like right. with a new quarterback too. So. I'm sure Will Levis is like, damn it. Yeah, I think Mark Stoops is like, man. I lost, I lost John Summerall to Troy and now I'm losing Liam Cohen. There's going to be some replacements for Kentucky uh, and we'll, <laughs> and we'll do, and we'll do state of the union with Kentucky here soon. Cause that's, I'm fascinated by how Stoops has accomplished what he's accomplished in Lexington. Uh, but instead today's state of the union will be LSU. So keep an eye on what Kentucky has to do with the offensive coordinator. Just wanted to make sure we got that in there. Um, when we come back, we're going to have a longer conversation with Scott Rabelais of the Baton Rouge advocate. We're going to, at, we, we talked to him about, Brian Kelly recruiting, you know, everything under the sun, the quarterback situation, the roster expectations for 2022. We did sort of our state of the union. Now that Brian Kelly has been on the job for a couple of months in Baton Rouge, Scott Rabelais is going to join us. So when we come back, uh, Aaron and I will have some thoughts following the interview. So stay tuned for that. But uh, when we come back, Scott Rabelais of the Baton Rouge advocates going to be right here on fringe element. Fringe element is a podcast about sec football. And it is brought to you, Aaron Dugan, by the wonderful and amazing and spectacular very real folks at jaspers running establishments the way they should be run mainly by females um (laughs) deb Deb, (laughs) Deb is a fantastic chef as is um i mean we've got marketing females at the top of marketing managers pastry chefs (laughs) so you're not you're not wrong it runs better than things that don't have them 
females. I mean, that's a, that's a catchy one there, Dugan. It, yeah, it it is, and it's it just true. rolls off the tongue. It's a catchy. It runs better than places that don't have them. Yes, no, but it's true, and uh, everyone should take notes from them, not only about how to cook things, but also about how to run um, organizations, companies, and anything for profit in general. Jaspers, far more efficient than the college football playoff. Not hard to be. What's the opposite of inept? It's not ept. <laughs> it is technically ept, but no one says really? that. I believe not, so. Yeah, that's interesting. I have to Vamp, that if you will. Uh, at their, well, apt. They're apt to be more. Um, that's like a tendency, I feel like. You're, you're always challenging me on my words. Um, I'm not challenging you. I'm just correcting you. <laughs> that's all right. I've had to correct you a few times, too, on the words. You okay? have. So let's, we're, we're equal opportunity correctors here on the podcast. May, honestly, I might be wrong about this. I don't, I don't I remember anyone because uh, it's inept. And so you would think with the prefix that it would just be ept, but I don't think I've ever heard anyone say like, oh man, Nick Saban is so apt at running a football program. I don't think anyone <laughs> says it. I do agree with oh. you there. I was just wondering if technically, you know. Um, I've got a lot of aptitude at doing ad reads. Synonyms and antonyms. You do, Braden. I'm amazing. And uh, Anton and Sable. Uh, might not be a word. See, there you go. All right. This is a good okay. Jaspers, everybody. Uh, great drink specials. Great place to watch games. Uh, great place to eat. Great place to park because that's free. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can bring your laptop, Google Words if you want to. Yeah. Wi Fi. Or, yeah. I think. Yep. You probably, in fact, you could go to Jaspers with a couple friends have a couple beers, eat a meal, and you could probably come up with a better playoff format than the people that actually are in charge of it. Shots fired. Yeah. I'm not going to go that far, I'm but sure, I'm sure they're terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what friends you take. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. won't hear this, but if they did. Yes. Well, um, all right. Go to Jasper's everybody. You got anything else for people? Uh, have you looked up the word ept yet? Have you gotten there? Cause you've been a lot of Googling over there. Uh, I think we're good. I think move on. I'll let you know later or next week if I find out something different. I won't Fringe remember to do that. Just move on. No, you won't. Fringe Element is brought to you by the wonderful and amazing folks at Jasper's. It is the next evolution of the sports bar and the parking is free. Scott, welcome to the show, man. Great to see you. Always a pleasure to talk a little LSU athletics. How are you, sir? Um, I'm great. I'm in, in the middle of LSU athletics. So a little bit of a windy uh, day here at uh, Alex Fox Stadium. Well, uh, it is one of the premier venues in all of college baseball. So uh, LSU, of course, has a chance to win another national championship this year. They're, they're loaded on baseball. We're here to talk football, and I want to get sort of a, the broad strokes, State of the Union, now that they've moved on from Coach O. Brian Kelly is, is a little bit more entrenched now after a couple of months on the job. Can you give us a sense as to what LSU fans are feeling now that the transition is sort of – made its full sort of, uh, I guess it's full completion. Yeah. I mean, obviously the expectation is to win every game, but I think there's, I don't think people are really expecting that in 2022. I think there's guarded optimism with the program. I think, uh, there's expectation that things will be better than the last two years where, you know, they six five and five, six and six, then lost to the Texas bowl to Kansas state. But how much better is, uh, it's a question. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a brutally tough conference. The schedule just set up with a chance that they could be like four and oh or so, you know, get, get out of the gate pretty strongly. They open with Florida state, the Superdome, and I guess some non-conference games uh, they can win at home, miss state at home, the game they'll be favored in. And before they finally go to Auburn. So maybe it's a, they can build some momentum, which they've really never been able to get the last couple of years. Yeah, they lost their opener to miss state two years ago. They lost the opener at UCLA and it's kind of set a tone for the season. I think maybe this year, they can get off to a good start. That'll be better. But yeah, got to got to replenish the roster. I mean, they, they they were very thin, obviously, in the in the Texas Bowl by the end of the season. They're doing that. They still have a few spots left. But uh, I I think uh, I think this guarded optimism that Kelly, who has won everywhere he's been, will be able to to uh, do the same thing at LSU. Kelly is a fascinating creature just in general, because as you mentioned, he's won everywhere. He's been championship level good at almost every single stop of his career for many different stops. And certainly LSU has had three coaches in a row win the national championship. So that is the expectation, but he is sort of an interesting cat there. there he's an acquired taste. He, he had to like calm down a little bit at Notre Dame a couple of years ago, and it has worked for him. How is, and I, I don't think fit is the right 
word to ever use to describe a coach's potential success or failure, but it is LSU's a little different, you know, like you just have to sort of get the vibe down there. So how, how has it, how has he fit in? We've seen the internet videos that have gone viral. Let's forget about that for a second. Day in, day out. Does he, does it feel like he and the staff are fitting in the way they need to, to sort of entrench themselves? Well, first of all, people talk about fit, as you said, and LSU had the ultimate fit with Ed Orgeron, and it was great for a while, and it didn't end very well. So, I mean, you couldn't get more fit for South Louisiana than, than somebody like Ed Orgeron. Uh, that said, you know, Brian's from a different part of the country, and is coached in a different part of the country. That was true for, for Nick Saban when he came here as well. That was true for, for uh, somebody like Bill Arnsparger. I, I've always had this theory about LSU football that the most successful, most respected coaches that I've seen in my lifetime at LSU or were, were, were those two guys I just mentioned, Saban and Arnsbarger. No nonsense, business-like, organized, get it done. Guys with NFL backgrounds, of course, Brian doesn't have that, but, but with you know, defensive-minded coaches and then the different styles, obviously, and different backgrounds. But I, he kind of reminds me of that kind of vein. I don't think there's going to be a lot of a lot of – BS with Brian Kelly. I mean, you see, yeah, the videos, yeah, they're kind of, kind of crazy. Of course, everybody made fun of the, the video of him speaking at the basketball game, which I was there. I didn't really hear a Southern affectation <laughs> of an, but, uh, you know, I was trying to speak over the crowd, but, uh, you know, whatever. Made the news. Maybe, maybe there's no. Uh, but uh, he's got some coaches on the staff that, that are, are, um, are, are, are from this country. I mean, uh, getting Hankton away from uh, Georgia to be the receivers coach. That was big. Getting Frank Wilson to come back, leave a head coaching position at McNeese State, come back and be one of his lead assistants, uh, you know, coordinate recruiting. Very big. I mean, you got to you gotta have ties with these high schools in Louisiana because it's such a fertile state for recruiting. So I think, I think he's, uh, I, I think those things indicate a, a settling in and knowing where he is and, you know, the fact that he needs some help in that regard because he, you know, he's recruited Louisiana, but in, in this region, but they recruit all over at Notre Dame. So I, I, I think, I think you, I think you'll be fine. Uh, you know, it's, it, you know, people are, are all football all the time in Louisiana. I, I think he's probably that kind of guy as well. And I, I think if he wins, he'll, he'll be a, a great fit and they'll love him. If, if not, then they won't. But uh, yeah, the, the track record indicates that there's going to be a lot for LSU fans to love. I, I know I'm, I'm asking this knowing full well that it's almost impossible to answer with just a couple of months of data. He, he does close relatively well on the recruiting trail. They do fill a lot of holes through the portal. Do you get a sense of his ability to recruit? Because the, the reason he leaves Notre Dame to come to LSU is to recruit in that one bigger pond, right? Like we've been recruiting in a big pond, but now I want to recruit in the biggest pond. Do you have any sense at all of his ability to how he's going to swim around in that in those waters? Well, they grabbed a, a five-star um, Harold Perkins, I believe, uh, for, who was committed to Texas A&M. Was looking around, decided to go with LSU, five-star linebacker from the Houston area. Yeah, they, they've re they've relied so much on the transfer portal. They've got a lot of transfers to fill in holes, and they still have four or five, I think, five spots, uh, scholarship spots uh, in this class and on the on the roster under the eighty-five scholarship limit. So they've lead a lot. I think it's been an unusual year uh, because he came in in the middle of it. Uh, yeah, with you know, the with the with recruiting, uh, so I don't think it's a true test of how he's going to be recruiting the high school players. But but the, the portal is such a big part of it too. I don't think he's going to be as reliant on the portal uh, in the future as they are this year. But this year, yeah, they were down to you know around forty scholarship guys for the Texas Bowl. There's a lot of people to replace, and you have to go find those guys who can transfer in. So um, I think we've seen a, a few big successes with some, some big time recruits in this region that LSU generally recruits, which is East Texas to, to Florida along the Gulf coast. So I think you've seen some of that, but I, I think, I think a bigger test of that is to come because this is such an unusual situation. You got to find guys, got to find experienced guys to fill big holes uh, on, on this roster that, uh, that, that were really glaring omissions by the end of the last season. So obviously we all have enjoyed watching uh, the silliness at, at Auburn. And that's a team that's probably going to be pro I mean, again, very early here, but probably the pick to finish last in, in the division in the West. Where is the state of this roster come the summertime? Obviously there's things that are going to change, but is this a roster that's capable if, if miles Brennan's the guy and some of these guys are healthy and the portal works out that this could be a eight or nine win team, or is this more in a six or seven win range? 
I think I think eight or nine wins, maybe maybe nine wins is you could say the reasonable ceiling. But I think I think that's possible. Um, like I said, you, you 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 go to Auburn, and that's a game that's going to be interesting for for, for both teams uh, at that point in the season. You'll have seen about a month or so and see see where they are. Uh, like I said, if LSU can get off to a good start, they have a chance to be four and zero. So going to that game, maybe five and zero. You got Alabama on the schedule. Always you go to Texas A&M. That's going to be difficult. I don't think anyone's going to pick LSU up at the top. That's just going to be picked around the middle of the pack. I think in the division, probably probably fourth or so. Uh, you got to go to Arkansas this year. That's going to be a, a challenge uh, because uh, you know, the, you know there's a program that's that's shown that this gets some tough, toughness there. You know, and, and, and it's always a tough one else has to go to Fayetteville. Always seems to be cold, and it's just you know it just seems to be a difficult challenge. So, I think they'll they'll if they can win the games, they should win. You know, sweep the non-conference schedule and uh, and win win at home in, in the games. Get it, you know maybe go get a win on the road. Certainly at, at Auburn or you know, a couple of these other games. You know, they go to Florida. What's Florida going to be like in their first year under under new coaching uh, staff? So, the, there's some big questions that we can't answer. But I, I think I think the expectation, especially if you got a you got a potentially excellent pass com, catch combo with Miles Brennan, who I think will be the starter. I think we all expect that. And Keishon Butte coming back for this year, who's been one of the premier receivers in the conference the last couple of years. Uh, I think uh, the potential is, is 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 I say bright, but certainly a chance to be respectable and get some of that respect back that you've that has kind of been tarnished the last couple of years. Uh, are are LSU fans excited about this this whole new era of, of football? Yeah, there's always excitement with with a new era, right? And I've always said that the, the the ideal situation for LSU fans would be to win the national championship every year and still change coaches every year, so you can have that intrigue and that and that that you know that who's it going to be and what's it going to be like. And um, I, I think there's I think there's excitement. No, and the, this was a, an interesting coaching search. And one that wasn't that one guy. There certainly wasn't the former LSU guy out there, you know, like a former player or something like that. He's like, got to go get that guy to come back. Uh, there's a lot of talk about getting Jimbo Fisher to come back. Obviously, uh, that, that was a big one. But you, you kind of knew whoever the the coach was going to be that someone was going to be dissatisfied with it. And obviously, you have those people saying, "Oh, Brian Kelly, uh, he he never could get over the hump and win the national championship at Notre Dame." And they, you know, he's he's not from this part of the country. And what does he know about this? And why is he coming down here? So there's gonna there's gonna be some of that. But but uh, yeah, I think there's I think there's a general excitement and, and expectation that again, he I think he's he's going to remind people of some of the successful coaches that they respect from the past. And they're going to be like, hey, yeah, I mean, it's hard to see Nick Saban doing one of those dancing videos with a recruit. I, you know, <laughs> I really, you got to do what you got to do these days. But uh, the guy's a little more personality than I think uh, people give him credit for uh, in that regard. So, um, but uh, yeah, I think, I think there's general excitement just to see improvement, to see more organization on the field, to see a, a, a team that's maximizing their efforts instead of this kind of, languishing as we've seen in the post Joe Burrow era the last two years. It, it, is everybody aligned with the decision to hire Brian Kelly? Cause I mean, we know we, again, we've seen Auburn and Tennessee do this and like around the sec, it happens quite quickly where people disagree. D- does it feel like everyone was aligned and, and one guy made the decision? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's funny. You mentioned that word. That was a word Brian Kelly used several times at his introductory press conference alignment, alignment with William Tate, the school president, Alignment with Scott Woodward, the athletic director, of course, hired Jimbo Fisher at, at, at Texas A&M and, and uh, hired uh, uh, Peterson at, at, at Washington when he when he was there. Uh, an alignment of, of values like, yes, this is a place that wants to win, is committed to winning, has given you all the tools to win at the highest level. Go and go and do that. And uh, I, I think from the administration down, there is a, a serious uh, and I'm talking about the athletic, the academic administration on down. There's a serious effort to want to want to win and rebuild uh, and, and use football to rebuild instead of detract from LSU's reputation overall as a school. I mean, we, you know, aside from you know being basically a 500 program the last two years, you've had all these off the field issues with with the uh, sexual assault claims and the whole university. Not and football was involved. You know, some you know, allegations against Darius Geis, a former player, and what did Ogeron know and that sort of thing. It, it was good in that respect too to get a break and to and to, to have have a, a delineation from all of that. Uh, I think a good from LSU perspective. So uh, I think, yeah, in all that regard, it's like you know that bringing in someone of Kelly's stature and demeanor. Look, like, the guy if he doesn't coach another game, he would be in the College Football Hall of Fame one day. You know for what he's done, winning yep. two hundred 
something games yep. uh, uh, at different levels. So, yeah, I think there's definitely that, you know, every, everybody was in agreement. This is the guy they needed ultimately. I still think if Scott Woodward could have had his way, he would have hired Jimbo Fisher, but Jimbo Fisher wasn't moving. So, and, but this is often the case in football searches, right? You don't always get Brian Kelly wasn't the one a guy, but he was somebody up there when, when they, when they settled down and finally took a serious look at the candidates who could out do they could get. Yeah. Alabama wanted Rich Rodriguez. So let's just remember, let's just remember that. Um, are we ever, you, you mentioned all the stuff that was going on and I'm, I'm assuming the fans don't probably care too much. They probably want to move on, but are we ever going to, I mean, I know coach O's like got this weird relationship with LSU because of the, you know, staying on and doing events and stuff. Like, are we ever going to actually find out what, what happened and who knows what, and, or is that just sort of going to be buried forever? You think? Well, there's still lawsuits going on, so no, I wouldn't say it's buried forever. I mean, yeah, the, and, and there've been some some shifts in some of that. Uh, you know, there've been Ogeron and, and uh, has been dropped from the lawsuit, but there's still things going on for the university. They're still trying to, you know, they're still trying to deal with, and it could, you know, what happens when, what happens when you often see sexual assault um, cases, people come forward, someone else comes forward. You know, it's not, it, it, it empowers someone else to come forward and tell their story and make accusations. So, yeah, I think this is something else she's going to be dealing with for a while. Would they like to kind of bury it and or, or at least put it aside and say we've moved on, we've improved, we've made these changes where, you know, we're, we're turning over a new leaf? Yes. But, uh, no, I don't think it's quite over for, for LSU. No, uh, not yet. All right. Well, I'll let you go with, with some non-football, a non-football question, and that is LSU fans more excited about a, an SEC tournament and potential NCAA tournament bid and run from the basketball team or more excited about the start of LSU baseball season? Well, you know, LSU is an unusual place because of the, the success in basketball, uh, in baseball, rather. And there's been some success in basketball, obviously, under Will Wade and in the past, you know, some great players. But uh, it's it's football, then baseball, then basketball <laughs> at LSU. So, yeah, I think baseball, they scored 51 runs, set a school record in their first series of the season against Maine, first three-game series. So they're pretty excited about the new coach they have, too, in, in baseball, Jay Johnson. Look, Scott Woodward has made... A lot of big hires in the last year. He hired Kim Mulkey away from Baylor. He hired Jay Johnson, who's been to two World Series in five years at Arizona. He's and now hired Brian Kelly. So uh, known for making splash hires. And, and this is one. Yeah, people are pretty excited about the baseball team right now. People like the they want the gorilla ball to come back. And so they're excited about <laughs> yes, that. Yes, 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 they do. Um, all right. here. So, so what we call... ADs like Scott Woodward on this show, we call them, we call them gangsters. Like you got to be gangsters to be good in the sec. If you can get gangster into a headline or a story about Scott Woodward in the next year, uh, we will, we'll, you know, dinner's on us. All right. Yeah. Like John Rothstein always, when else she wins a basketball game, oh, we'll wait American gangster. Yeah. There, there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he, yeah he, he kind of is. Yeah. He's, he kind of fits that mold too. I'll, I'll do my best. And, and, I, and we mean that as a compliment too, by the way, like you, you, you gotta be, Hardcore sure. to be a great athletic director in the SEC. There's no question about it. Scott, always a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And uh, enjoy the base- basketball and the baseball here coming up in Baton Rouge. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. That was Scott Rabelais of the Baton Rouge Advocate. Been covering that team for a very long time. I've never done an interview um, with someone like standing inside of a baseball stadium. So that I was, mean, like straight kind of line cool. wins. It, do, <laughs> it does get better. It Like it it's started like very, out. It's only like the first question. Yeah. 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 Um, no, but uh, I, I thought some really interesting stuff about, you know, him pointing out the history of coaches that have worked there and how they were not cultural fits, I think is an interesting point by him. Mm-hmm. Um, I also enjoyed the, um, the, the, the conversation about recruiting. I, I thought he was really interested, interesting about that. And then of course I had to ask him about coach O like what's happening. <laughs> right. There, there sure are a lot of lawsuits still pending. So um, a lot going on with LSU. Well, I am interested. I think the coaching staff, and this is the this was Brian Harson's downfall at Auburn. It, it, honestly, was like not the, the, the arguments about the coaching staff, and it, it, what it appears is that Brian Kelly has been able to make his own decisions, and has made some really smart decisions about who to bring in from SEC country, air quotes, and LSU, you know, Louisiana guys with ties to the area and the region versus bringing in my own guys to run the things I want them to run. It feels like Brian Kelly has made all these decisions where it did not feel like Brian Harson made all those decisions last year. And that I think is a, is a good thing. Billy Napier at Florida, by the way, no question is making all of his own decisions. So th- those, if you're an LSU fan, I think that's a positive sign. Yeah. Um, I agree. And I 
totally agree with his point about you kind of have to work with what you got. So because of the timing of Brian Kelly, you know, yes, he's, tr- he's capitalizing on the transfer portal and doing everything he can with it. Will it be as much like that in the future? Probably not. It was kind of just the cards he was dealt with the timing, but um, seems to have secured some good guys from that. Uh, to me, this is not just because I know Hankton, but getting Cortez Hankton from Georgia is huge. I mean, there's working with him directly. I, I have a lot of faith in that guy. Obviously we watched what he can do at Georgia. Um, great cultural ad and fantastic coach, um, wide receivers coach. And I will say though, the coach O thing, he said, you know, um, he said, it's good to have, get some distance from the controversy. And just a reminder, not hating on LSU too bad, but um, Coach O is in some ways a symbolic separation from the controversy. LSU is still part of the controversy that it has going on. So although we, it does look like there's some separation between the drama, um, Coach O, you know, it was not the only reason for that. There's yep. some stuff deep rooted in there that we don't have to get into, but it's not all coach. O. So two, some stuff still needs to be addressed at LSU. Two very good points by you. I, I think Brian Kelly is selected and picked and choosed, chosen. Choosed. The, don't the, tell me how to use words. <laughs> <laughs> he has picked and choosed the exact coaches he wants from the South and from elsewhere for his scheme. And so I think that's, that is a, a positive sign. I mean, this guy I talked about with Scott, like the dude's won everywhere it's ever been. It's not like he doesn't know how to build a program. The question is, right. can he get that five-star athlete? So, and there are some good signs. He even mentioned, like you mentioned, there's some good signs about some of that as well. Um, the, the coach O history, history stuff, like I completely agree with you. It's not, none of it is separate, even though it feels sometimes separate, but it's all tied together. And uh, I don't know if we're, I, the part of the reason I asked him that question is like, I just don't know if we're ever going to actually learn like what took place and what happened. And remember he's, he's still employed by LSU. <laughs> yeah. Like who knows what, I don't think we're ever going to learn that. And I don't think LSU fans care. I don't think they do. I think some do care about what's at the root of this. They also want to win, but it's important that, you know, if we're not going to be part of the college football culture that sweeps things under the rug to remember that just because you yep, yep. symbolically fire a coach and don't really fire him because he's still paid by the university because you don't want him to talk, <laughs> that maybe the university is still part of the controversy and there's not actual separation between the yep. drama and, you know, uh, Coach O didn't take everything with him. In fact, he still works there. So, yep. Yep. Whatever. Well, Anyways. and and guess what? Baseball season's here. And I know you're a huge baseball fan. I'm a huge college I baseball fan. It. We love we love the SEC. So LSU's freaking at, good. LSU's loaded. So is Vanderbilt, by the way. Um, Tennessee, pretty solid too. Um, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, two of the top teams in the conference as well. I think there are four or five teams at the top of the league. You know, I think LSU's one of them. Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Vandy. Um, probably maybe Arkansas in there. But then you throw in South Carolina, LSU, Tennessee, Florida, like a lot of good teams. I think we should go to Omaha no matter what happens. Marin's old enough to enjoy it. I could bring her part of the time. You're like, no. <laughs> Braden has this look on his how face I, like how do I he was this? excited about Omaha. And then he's like, oh, I don't know about yeah. kids. How do I put this? Um, I would absolutely be overjoyed to share Omaha with my daughter. Um, it is not I'll help you. It, it might would, be better it, when she's older. It would not be the same trip if I, as any of the other times I've been to Omaha. Yeah, that's fair. Where it involved a lot of beef and a lot of beer. Take her when you can feel okay to let her have a sip of beer, even if she's not 21 yet. Um, true story. My three-year-old wanted to try the martini the other night. And I said, sure, go for it. See what you think. And then she proceeded to spit all of it back into the drink. See, my parents did that with my brother with beer, except for he liked it. True story. I I still drank it all. I was like, no way I'm pouring this drink out. No way. I mean, you made her, so. Oh, yeah. She, yeah, she gets her slobber all over our faces all the time. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. (laughs) Probably why my, it's probably why I'm all twisted up right now. That's probably what's happening. And Um, that's, you appreciate good liquor. So you would never at a party ask to drink someone's really nice liquor without their permission. In fact, you'll drink what your small child spit back into your martini glass. (laughs) And that's why you should invite Braden to your parties because he will not take advantage of your liquor cabinet. 
if you put out clear liquor, I'll drink the, any of the crap. I'll drink the cheap, the cheap shit. There if you you're go. Out, if you're putting out the brown stuff, I, I may, I may just like, I may take the glass from you and then like look up at the top shelf and be and like longingly and see if you notice. I'm not yep. gonna say anything, but you're I'm gonna a little look pickier. up there. I'm gonna look up there and be like, hmm. But I see that Weller 12 up there. Are you sure you don't want to open that one? Is that the one that uh, travels in the ocean barrels? No, no, it does not. You know what I'm talking about? I, I do know which one you're talking about. I cannot, it's, I'm drawing a total blank on which one you're talking about. It's the one that they, they distill in the ocean, like mm-hmm. on the ocean. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. I've, I've tried that one. It's solid. Yeah. Um, there's so many good brown waters out there. Anyways, we're going to Omaha no matter what, so... All right. Uh, and where else would we go if we were in Nashville and wanted a great meal and wanted to watch a game? Jasper's, your hub for social interaction, being around competent females, and drinking. Compromise. Jasper's. <laughs> Getting shit done. Uh, thank you to Scott Rabelais for hanging out with us. Go check out the YouTube page. Rate, review, subscribe to all of the, the wonderful places, You know all the social medias. Aaron, where can people find you? Uh, the Aaron Dugan on Twitter and uh, Aaron underscore Dugan on the gram. There you have it. My name is Braden Gall. You can follow me on Twitter at Braden Gall uh, at 440 Sports as well. YouTube. And please go check out the YouTube. Aaron does great work putting that up every single week. Thank you guys all for listening. We'll be back next week talking more booze party etiquette right here on Fringe Element on the 440 Sports Network. Later. Later.